Well, let's go now to the Shadow Chief Secretary to the Treasury, Darren Jones. Good to see you this morning, Darren. Look, I know that you're here to talk to us about uh, Rishi's recession and talking about small businesses, uh, but we do want to talk to you about our top story this morning, which is, of course, uh, those three British aid workers who were killed by an Israeli drone strike. Uh, seven killed in total, seven people. Uh, what's the Labour Party's response to this attack? Well, firstly, the tragic news is uh, going to be hard for all of the families to hear. Uh, as I've said already this morning in TV interviews, one of the families are, are, are based here in Bristol. And so we've been in touch uh, with them to help as best we can. This should not have happened. Uh, aid workers are supposed to be protected. They should not be targeted by military forces in a war zone. Uh, their vehicles, their convoy were clearly marked. The route they were taking had been pre-notified. And Israel now has to answer questions as to how this unimaginable circumstance could have happened uh, in the first place, and they should do so quickly. The difficult thing then is that the consequence of this is that it makes it harder for aid to be made available to people who so desperately need it in Gaza, uh, because this puts the aid workers at more risk than they should be uh, under and it closes off routes that people thought might have been available to them to help and reminds mm. us why it's a consequence of that. We have to get to a position of uh, a sustainable ceasefire as quickly as possible um, and for a political dialogue to resume. There are discussions in the Foreign Office at the moment in response to this about limiting intelligence sharing with Israel and also limiting arms sales. If it is found that Israel isn't abiding by international humanitarian laws, should we limit our intelligence sharing with them and should we limit arms sales? So there's a couple of separate issues there. Firstly, the Foreign Secretary, Lord Cameron, has said that in the first instance, the Zero must answer the questions that we've just discussed and that the government will consider whether further action should therefore be taken. And we will wait to see what the government says about that in due course. In terms of arms licenses, there is a process for license control for the export of arms. And if the evidence shows that those export licenses, the terms of those export licenses have been breached, then the consequences that flow from that should flow from that. And we would expect the government to set out more detail on that in due yeah. course. And it should be transparent about that with relevant parliamentary committees. But the last thing to say, of course, is you talked about the international uh, uh, court. Um, that is decisions for the international uh, court to make, not for politicians to make in the same way as it has been uh, through this conflict. Even though very readily the images that we see are horrifying and we want them to stop, we need to leave legal judgments to judges, uh, not to politicians. Darren, just moving you on now to the economic agenda. Um, and you, you, Ellie was, was using this term, Rishi's recession. Um, what, what proof do you have of this and what are the figures to back up a term like that? Yeah, here you're fine. Sorry about the delay. The helm of the government. And we are in a recession. It's been confirmed by the independent statistics. So that's why we call it... Rishi's recession, even though it's quite hard to say. Um, the, the data that we've published today, though, from the Labour Party shows the real impact of that. You know, 40,000 businesses across the country, small businesses, are either making less money than they did last year or have gone bust entirely. And people will know that because if they look at uh, their high streets, they will have seen independent shops and businesses go uh, bust. And this is an issue that can't be related to the pandemic. This is a post-pandemic uh, issue. And it really affects the vibrancy and quality of local communities. And that's why we say that there are measures that the government should take, uh, and if they won't, that we will take if we win the election later this year, to support small and independent shops and businesses in our high streets across the country. Mm. I was reading this morning that the Labour Party are pinpointing uh, housing as a leading issue in the next general election, that Sir Keir Starmer is going to be taking on the NIMBYs in order to get lots of new houses built. I mean, that will be welcome uh, news to many, many people watching and listening today. Uh, but you've got to ask the question, haven't you? Is this all talk and no action? To get planning is very, very difficult. and There's a lot of regulation in place. Yeah, we have the plans that underpin our target of delivering 1.5 million homes over the course of the next parliament. Uh, we probably don't have time to go, go through all of them, but there are measures that we have in place about making sure that more planning officers are available um, at the councils to be able to make decisions about freeing up 
um, what we call grey belt, where some areas of land are mis uh, misclassified as green belt when actually they're really brown field sites that should and could be developed about coordinating our infrastructure investment, whether that's on transport or water and utilities to make sure that uh, new towns are being built with sufficient capacity to meet the needs of uh, local people and taking the view that where local councils are not getting on with setting targets and setting out the plans for how housing will be delivered, we will use the measures available to us in Westminster if we win the election later this year um, to mandate that so that we can make progress on this important issue for people. Darren Jones, got to leave it there. Thank you very much indeed. Darren Jones is the Chief Secretary to the Treasury.